POFMA, the bill, on the determination of falsehoods, the court oversight is by way of a direct appeal. And that was a considered decision by the government. The, and the process will be made fast and inexpensive for individuals. Other exercise of government powers under the bill, judicial review will be available, as is the law now. So whatever concerns there are about the bill, they cannot logically have been increased by this bill. And lawyers will know when you have a narrower bill and the facts come within the narrower bill as opposed to the broader law in general, the narrower act will apply. So in fact, that represents a narrowing of the current position. So as members speak, I hope the debate will be based on an understanding of the current position. And I'll do that by ask, putting a series of questions. Does the current law already criminalize transmission of falsehoods? Answer is yes. Does the bill take a narrower position? Answer is yes. So these arguments about definition of fact, these concerns cannot be new. We have had similar provisions all this while with less judicial oversight. So how does the bill increase the concerns? Second, takedowns, corrections. Are they possible now? Answer is yes. Third, can a minister order takedown now? Answer is yes. Fourth, can a minister order takedowns on broader grounds and under the bill? Answer is yes. Fifth, does the bill give greater judicial oversight? Answer is yes. So having said that, members can then ask, if the powers are narrower in essential respects, why is the government introducing this legislation? Why not just rely on existing legislation? The existing legislation with broad powers has been in place for some time, or have been in place for some time. After the SC process, we decided, let's have new legislation with a narrower set of powers than under existing legislation, focused on online falsehoods, with remedies that are more calibrated and provide for greater judicial oversight over executive action. So it's designed specifically for the internet rather than rely on existing legislation and to deal specifically with online falsehoods rather than the broader areas that are covered under the BA. An alternate approach was entirely possible, which would be to rely on existing legislation with slight tweaks and add subsidiary legislation. If we relied on existing legislation, what we want to achieve under this bill can be achieved as follows. First, rely on the BA, Broadcasting Act, as it is now, for correction directions, takedown directions, general correction directions, and demonetization to some extent. Section 16 of the BA allows IMDA to direct a licensee to take such action with regard to content as it considers necessary to comply with the Act. So that would be the BA. And then you have subsidy legislation under the BA, which can be passed with account restriction directions, declaration of online location, advertising levers. Then you move on to the existing class licensing scheme, can also be amended through subsidy legislation to cover provision of content by individual publishers and clarify that internet intermediaries like Facebook and Google are also covered. So all of this could have been done under subsidy legislation. The only thing, and the only thing that would have required a statutory amendment would have been one point under the Broadcasting Act to, to the territoriality provision to include internet intermediaries based outside of Singapore. But that really is not in dispute. I don't think anybody in this house will say we shouldn't cover internet intermediaries based outside Singapore. So in, if we had taken this alternate approach, the powers would be broad and there would be less judicial oversight. Issues that have been raised, fact versus falsehoods, public interest, ministerial action, all there would be no amendments needed for the legislation can rely on existing legislation. Members can therefore see, if we had relied on existing legislation with appropriate amendments, and if you map that against issues that have been raised in public, 
fact versus falsehoods, public interest, ministerial action to, be, to take down, there would have been no need to amend. If we had taken that approach, the result would have been an instrument with none of the calibration that the bill proposes or the extent of judicial oversight, which is also going to be made speedier under the current proposals. So the BA was essential at its time to achieve the objective of that act. It provides a balanced framework applicable to all forms of broadcast content. The bill, on the other hand, was fashioned to deal specifically with falsehoods that can be spread online with incredible speed in a targeted manner, and to address such falsehoods with speed, with proportionality, and with the courts given greater powers. That is why the bill is preferable. <clears throat>